Since the time of the Founding Fathers, dark forces have been preying on America. As the fight against these vampires continued, a secret organization has trained people with remarkable skills. The agent's duty is to protect ordinary people from the forces of evil. Chester will be none too chatty with his guts sprayed all over a train carriage. I know how to shape an explosion, Edgar. Secretary of War, not the Secretary of Bridges. Uh, let's go have a look, see. I go high. Nah, it's not that bad. I'm almost there. <laughs> Let's give it a try. What's that sound? Stop whining! Start moving! You smell that? Shit!
1857, 1864, 1881. Arranged in order of vintage like fine wines. All dead. Fuck. Boy, you better make all this worth our time, Chester. Time for this thing to collapse.
Jesus. Christ. <coughs> Worst damn barbecue ever. Hey, boyo, guess who's riding in first class and responsible for the biggest delivery in gathering history? Remember when the dream of attending the gathering was just that? Wishful thinking. But I am on my way, soon to be hobnobbing with the creme de la creme. The oldest, the wisest, the most powerful. This is where it begins. If I play this right, in 100 years, I'll be the one being catered to by human douchebags like you. That's it for now. I must bid you adieu. There's still much to do, and I can't louse this up. Yours truly, Chester, the Catering King. I can smell you, Chess, you lousy skunk.
Get that son of a bitch! Young Rent here. Still on your father's leash, I see. <laughs> Heard you were on your way to the gathering, Chess. What's this? Catering? Why, I have no idea what you. <laughs> That big shiny ball out there is no good for your sensitive skin. The sun's not to know what they'll do to me. <laughs> Fun game. Let's test that theory. No, no, no Richard, stop! Belmontville! The, the gatherer's in Belmontville! <laughs> Excellent choice, Chester. And since you're feeling so damn helpful, we're gonna be needing a guide. Consider it a promotion. Give shit. Belmontville's a long way from the manor. We're on a clock here. We've been hunting Debano for three months. What's another few hours? Uh, have it your way. But your father's gonna have your ass as an ashtray if we don't make that presentation. You're retired. What's he gonna do? Fire you? Belmontville Mines, huh? Oh, we're gonna be walking blind into a damn maze. And if our tick friend here is telling the truth, the Bono's gonna be right in the middle of it. I don't think I'm in a position to lie, do you? <laughs> That's the spirit, Chester. Now you lift those fancy illusions, and who knows? Maybe you'll make it out of this after all. The glamour! I... <laughs> Even I have my limitations, Mr. Gravener. You want a limitation? How about walking around without a head? Crawling with familiars. No question. <laughs> and where do you think you're going? Judging by that tone of yours, Sounds like I'm making sure Fancy Pants here doesn't make a run for it. In broad daylight. That's why we need familiars. I'm starting to question your qualifications for this job. Those ass licking. <laughs> Tick lovers should be shot on sight. Ah, what the hell. Maybe we can play with dynamite out here too. Right, Jess? I'll make you a new waistcoat. I don't believe my tailor would like that. See? You're bonding already. Ah, eat me!
That gathering won't find itself, you know? Move it. You know, the can is right there in front of you. Oh, shut up. I told you my sight's not recovered after the change. Hey, so you're telling me it's not the booze? Family of Calvert. Oh, another tick wannabe. Well, that's not gonna happen. Bye.
Yeah, that looks about right. Dime to Bono's here somewhere. Dead end. Great. Hmm? You seeing this too? Take it off. Mr. Rentier, on a first date? What do you take me for? You're right. Maybe a little light to set the mood. No, no need. I see it now. Of course. The glamour. I'm on it. Today, Chester. Please. I need to concentrate. It's not that easy to sever the illusion from its source. What's the source? You don't want to know. Switch. I'll take the explosives, you get to Bono. Is this about the bridge? It's not not about the bridge. <sighs> Got the damn train, didn't I? But that, that's something. It's hard to compete against the species that keeps on growing and advancing with their technology. Creating new and more dangerous weapons of war and other engineering marvels. As I see it, the real struggle is nature versus technology. Instinct versus genius. We have allowed those naturally subordinate to us to transform themselves from prey into predators. If we don't alter this trajectory, eventually they will murder us all.
not enough. Species, brothers and sisters. We are not bred. We are not born. We come to life when we accept the gift of change. Our powers are many, and they have served us well. The art of glamour has given us safety through secrecy, but I am afraid we are becoming the victims of progress. Sooner or later, Human technology will find a way to see past our illusions. They will expose and demonize us and make us their ultimate enemy. Inevitably, we will become their inferiors. Jesus, it's huge. When did they build this? And how? their little party.
We consider ourselves proud hunters. Predators. Secrecy is lifted, we won't stand the chance. We might be more powerful, but they will crush us with their numbers. <laughs> Listen to the voice. Enough. Your lines first for all out war with the humans endangers us all. Peace of Navarro. Without the shoe. The wolves go hungry, yes. The day is coming when the sheep will outwit the wolves. Haven't you been watching, brother? The humans have harnessed the power of steam and lightning, and they grow mighty. If our hubris allows us to grow fat and lazy in the shadows, they will soon have the power to hunt us down like dogs. And so, you propose war. War suggests there is a chance we might lose. I propose we strike. With my new asset, we can control the change. Reclaim the Sanguasuja's rightful place at the top of the food chain. Control the change. Are you mad? Even suggesting such a thing is blasphemy. Dominic, brother, these are blasphemous times. While my methods may very well be at variance with our tradition, I can tell you one thing. If we don't adapt, we will perish. Enough. I will not allow even your bastard greed to, to lead us. Into annihilation. Peter Davana. I sentence you and your line. I told you, Father. They wouldn't. Mikara, our work will be a lot easier if we can help them understand. If we can't... Then... We... FORCE THEM TO!
Think you could have brought a bigger knife? Some people get a gold watch when they retire. I got Susan here. And... <laughs> Should have asked him how to get out of here. Too late. He won't be of any use for a month or two. Wait. What about Chester? Well, what are you gonna do? Now that is how you shape an explosion. Damn, we're late. Now at least we won't be going back to the manor empty-handed. Spend taxpayers' money. James Harrow. The people's hero. <laughs> I heard the White House sends him golden toilet paper. As long as he keeps the presidential ass clear of tick trouble. Feed him well. We've got a lot of ground to cover tonight. You're not staying for the presentation? The whole institute is in town. Uh, I'll pass on the corporate back padding session. I don't need another retirement lecture. Here, take this to your father before it wakes up and starts cursing us all to high hell. Great, so I'll just tell him you've traded killing vampires for swilling cheap bourbon? Tell him whatever you want. Fine, skip the presentation. But you ain't getting away from a final drink with me afterwards. Home sweet home. gathered together in the manor. As life goes on, we stand guard at the gates. Mr. Rent here? At ease, boys. My father in his office? He is. How did it go? Did you get that big fangster you were after? Officially, they called it a cholera epidemic, but truth was they were dealing with a terrible outbreak of amateur necromancy. The entire institute was engaged in the hunt. Train fare here cost me an arm and a leg. Sure hope it's worth it. Taking it. Director Rentier sure looks edgy. Something's up. I can smell it. Well, where the hell you been? Thought you got bitten by some tick. Some of those fangy fellas were hiding out in Providence. That's why the heavy as hell border secured. Did you hear about those ones that grew tentacles? That's a first. Edgar and my father in the Civil War. Right before the bloody Battle of the Wilderness, Central Virginia. His life changed forever during that fight. Highborn nearly killed him. Badly tore up his leg. Edgar carried him in the dead of night across enemy lines to a field hospital, but... Surgeon could only do so much. After that, Dad could no longer function in the field.
Sir. Gravener's with you. He sends his regards. He's afraid you'll try and talk him out of retirement again. I don't believe either of us want that. You know, he did risk his life to get this for you. That's Harrow's trinket. I'm sure you'll both be rewarded accordingly. Edgar isn't some civilian looking for a medal. This is all he knows. Your institute saw to that. My institute? <sighs> this isn't about Agent Gravener, Jesse. We are on the cusp of great progress. Great change. Today's presentation is of critical importance to the family. After which... Edgar is family. After which, I expect you to step up to your duties here at the manor. With all due respect, Director, I am a field agent, not a paper pusher. You're a rentier! <sighs> Why must you always make me spoon-feed these things to you, Jesse? There are bigger things at work here than running around in caves slaying beasts. I do believe someday soon you will see it my way. And if you don't, it's my responsibility to force that change. Now, leave me be. I must prepare for the presentation. And send someone in here to clean up this mess. Mr. India, Agent Feathers is waiting for you in the lobby. Should have seen that priest armed with holy water, crosses, and whatnot. You're just in time. The presentation should be starting soon. What do you got for me this time? Mr. Rentier, you remember me? From my first year of cadet training. I'm the shortest one of the bunch. The very next year, I grew like a weed. Had to buy all new pants. Gravener by the stables. He ain't coming in. I heard Gravener's finally retired. Father in all his directorial glory. The artist who painted the portrait, what was his name? Philemon Cole? He was so curious about those gauntlets. We're kidding. Good to see you back, sir. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, if you'll take your seats. And, uh, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, I'm Assistant Secretary of War, James Harrow. President Cleveland wants you to know how appreciative we are of the vital service the Rentia Institute performs, defending our great country from monsters of all shapes and sizes. He also wanted me to make sure you're not blowing all our money on Mexican Monty, but that's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, quite. Well, uh, <clears throat> as I say, keep up the good work. God bless you all, and uh, God bless America. Thank you all for gathering here tonight. It's rare we gather in such numbers, but I believe great progress calls for momentous celebration. Our efforts in the fight against the Sanguisuja's spread have too often been baffled by the creature's most insidious weapon, their so-called glamours. These impenetrable illusions have allowed countless fiends to slip through our grasp for too long. That ends now. Agent Rentier, we've upgraded the standard field agent's gauntlet with something our science bods have affectionately named the Zapper. Not exactly an elegant name, but it does the trick. When triggered, the Zapper sends out an electrical impulse. 
that shatters any nearby Sanguizoo's glamours forthwith, eliminating what is not and leaving only what is. Once finished, these new gauntlets will be distributed to cells nationwide post eight, allowing us to sweep our respective territories for glamoured nooks and crannies. This is the beginning of a new age, gentlemen. Armed with this gauntlet, there is no way our enemy can surprise us.